A lot of what I thought I knew about this career was very wrong. What if I told you you don't need to be a really good programmer? In fact, it's not the best programmers that I keep seeing getting promoted. So I was thinking to myself, what is it then? What is it that makes these people so seemingly good? And I realized for the most part, it's the things nobody's paying attention to. My goal today is to share these with you. The things I wish I knew before becoming a software engineer at Microsoft. In hopes that, unlike me, you'll actually pay attention to the right things and grow your career on your own terms as a result. The first one is that communication and collaboration skills are critical. You can have a matrix wallpaper and work from a dark and lonely room, but the reality of software engineering is that it's a deeply collaborative discipline, just like many others. Yes, a bit cold and methodical at times, but that doesn't remove its need for software skills. I eventually learned that truly great software comes from teamwork. You all forgot the most important thing, teamwork. So a large part of the job involves working with designers, other developers, and even users. We really do get way better results when we bring efforts together and include diverse perspectives. I really wish I knew this ahead of time because I could feel how this stereotype tends to be how we wouldn't need to be exercising our social abilities all that much. That was certainly the belief when I was back in college, and I think that was a big part of why I never really challenged my introvert tendencies all that much. Excuse me, there's a sign at Rampsit Park that- Are you listening to me, sir? As you progress in your career, it is increasingly important to have impact through others rather than exclusively through your own work. That could be things like leading conversations with partner teams, helping teammates, giving presentations, or just attending morale events and getting to know your wider team. The skills that actually empower you to do this are severely underrated in this industry. If I realized this a bit sooner, I would have probably tried to break out of that shell a little earlier. I remember even avoiding some company morale events just out of the social anxiety they provoked and obviously didn't feel great. Um, Oh man, I can't. Why not? I'm not feeling so well. I got a ton of work to do here. MSG allergy, peanut allergy. I'm definitely not there yet. I'm actively working on this, but it's something I really wish I started sooner. Success is as much about having the right attitude as it is about having the right skills. So communication is important, but as you might have guessed, soft skills can't fully determine success in this field either. And this is where I stumble across the idea of attitude. Attitude is massively important because it directs a lot of your actions. It's kind of the conductor of the orchestra. Make sure you're making the best use of those skills you've built. The biggest problem I see is that this is not something super straightforward to develop. But I eventually landed on a technique that became really useful for me. And once this idea gets in your head, it's really hard to stop doing it. I remember I started paying attention and taking note whenever an engineer I looked up to would approach a problem I was interested in. And by problem, I really mean anything. Anything at all that helps the team meet its business goals. That could be reaching out to a partner team to request a fix or change in their area, speaking up during a meeting about about whatever concern, or even just being unafraid to ask very basic questions. What patterns they used, or how did they manage to split a task into multiple smaller chunks? These are all actions directed by their attitude towards their jobs. They're of course executed by their skills, but those skills are not that useful if you're not strategic with how you apply them. Anyways, after noting these things, I would then try to start building a mental library of these patterns, and try to internalize them to improve how I approach similar situations myself in the future. Future. An attitude that deeply cares about the client or customer, creates a welcoming working environment, and kind of drives the team forward is one of the best assets you can develop. It's very easy to burn out. One of the great things about the tech industry is just how good of a job it has done to reduce gatekeeping, basically creating a much more level playing field for everyone. You usually don't need a fancy degree or even a degree to get into tech, and the tech industry has gone great lengths to create fair career progression once you're in. And I'm really proud of that about my industry. But one concept consequence of this is just how easy it makes it to compare yourself to others. Unless we take a step back and deeply think about our career strategically, we try to make up for that seeming lack of performance by putting in extra hours. I've definitely been guilty of falling into that trap before. And playing the catch-up game is really exhausting and can very easily lead to burnout before you realize what you're doing. So I wish I had been more aware of this and just taken a step back before choosing to put in all those extra hours into work. And even if you refuse to put too much thought into this, you can still be pretty successful by putting the appropriate amount of effort. There's absolutely nothing wrong with going at your own pace and finding your own rhythm. Taking some time out for yourself, doing stuff that interests you, can actually help you improve your performance in the long run. The law of diminishing returns actually applies here as well. Too many extra hours can lead to negative outcomes and ultimately cause more harm than good.
The more you know, the more you realize you don't know that much. It's actually not super critical to know many things ahead of time. I used to put a lot of importance in feeling like an expert on a particular field, iOS development, for example. And I would naively think that being an expert meant knowing things. The reality is that the more you actually start becoming an expert in something, the more you realize you don't actually know that much. And the best part is that you become pretty much okay with that. A big part of this side of career growth is identifying your knowledge gaps without necessarily wanting to immediately fill them. The focus should be on developing the ability to solve problems. This means that it's okay to not know something. It's more valuable to observe and learn from more experienced professionals in order to gain a better understanding of how to tackle problems in a given field. This shift in perspective allows you to manage your efforts more strategically and frees up some time to focus on the skills that will actually help you succeed. Realizing this would have definitely changed how I manage my career. I would have placed a lot less effort in learning Python and JavaScript out of pure your FOMO and a lot more effort in absorbing how more senior engineers performed like we just talked. It's fine to learn new languages out of interest or if you're trying to build up your resume to land a job, but it might otherwise not be the best use of your time. The best code is often the code that is not written at all. Back in university, a lot of people would compete on who could type faster. As if that was like a real indication of who can code the fastest. That and people would always show off just how many lines of code they wrote for a given assignment or what their fancy different components were responsible of doing. That kind of planted the seed in my head that the industry also rewarded large amounts of code that brought with them fancy components to handle a lot of different scenarios. I would actually feel bad about publishing small PRs at the beginning. A couple of months into my software engineering job, I got interested in minimalism. I started integrating it into my life. And for some reason, those thoughts made me reconsider a lot of my previous habits around coding as well. That and of course, seeing what the industry actually rewarded. There's a saying that goes, premature optimization is the root of all evil. This means that if you try to optimize your code too early before you fully understand the problem and the requirements, you may end up with a solution that is more complex and less efficient than it needs to be. This can definitely lead to bugs and other issues that can be difficult and time consuming to fix. If you take some extra time to plan and design your software, you can actually avoid the need for unnecessary or overly complex code. These solutions should be easier to maintain and less prone to errors. Plus, it likely also save you time and effort in the long run, since you won't have to spend that much time debugging and fixing issues with your code. I actually made an entire video on how you can become a much better coder by adopting a thing or two from minimalism. So if you have some extra moments to spare, I'd recommend you go watch that next. I hope these are as useful to you as they were to me, but hopefully without the years that it has taken me to really internalize and practice them. In any case, and as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.